President Obama prods Israel's prime minister to end occupation of Palestinian territories while also maintaining that the U.S. relationship with Israel remains strong. The president met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly in New York today in what is perhaps a final meeting between the two leaders during the Obama administration. Correspondent Kevin Cork reports from the White House on Israel's response to the president's push for peace. Obviously, there are some differences between us. For much of his eight years in office, this seemed to be a fair representation of President Obama's relationship with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Cold, distant, even adversarial. Marked by differences over the Iran nuclear deal, Israeli settlements, and U.S. policy in the region. But that was a far cry from the scene in New York today, when the two men effusively praised each other in the wake of a massive military aid package between Washington and Jerusalem. It fortifies the principle that you've enunciated many times, that Israel should be able to defend itself by itself against any threat. The deal is for 10 years and $38 billion, $3.8 billion a year beginning with budget year 2019, compared with $3.1 billion under the deal set to expire in 2018, $33 billion in foreign military aid financing, and $5 billion for missile defense. Uh, we want to make sure that Israel uh, has the full capabilities it needs in order to uh, keep uh, the Israeli people safe. But the agreement also forces the Israelis to promise to give back any additional money that Congress appropriates. That's for South Carolina Republican Senator Lindsey Graham and other lawmakers to introduce legislation that would give Israel another $1.5 in direct military aid. When people say this is the most generous uh, you know, deal with Israel in decades, all I can say is that Congress is willing to do more. Brett, you heard about that $1.5 billion in additional aid that lawmakers would like to send Israel. To put that in perspective, that's just 1% of the, say, $150 billion in sanctions relief that the Iranian regime will get as a part of the Iran nuclear deal. A regime, I should point out, that is still calling for the destruction of the Jewish state. Brett? Kevin Cork live on the North Lawn. Kevin, thank you.